Hi, Dion. Hi, mate. How you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, well, well. Doing, so I'm a bit late with this. Uh, routine, you know? Say again? Keeping to the routine, you know? Yeah, 100%. How are you, how are you finding it? Yeah, it's all right. I feel like I'm on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> are you, I'm are you one of these right, you like, uh, being, like being sort of on your own, or do you prefer being, you know, in the gym, I'm sure? The gym, of course. I need a gym desperately. Like, there's only so many bodyweight exercises you can do in the park, you know? So, um, could do with a punching bag, some sparring partners, mm. Gary pushing me on. Yeah, missing out. Um, how, do you have sort of a gym set up at home to keep you going right now? No, we've got some equipment and looking to order some more. Mm. But um, as long as I keep a certain amount of body strength up, and uh, stay on the weight, I'll, I'll be ready for camp whenever. Yeah. I mean, what was sort of the update? Obviously, we saw you after your win over Sam Hyde. And for those that haven't seen it, it was, it was a brilliant fight uh, in January. What was uh, sort of the update from you? Obviously, English champion, mandatory for the British, um, Richard Riappel. Did Had you had any update on your next fight? I have had, I haven't heard anything from anyone Obviously, we know I'm mandatory for that spot. They know I'm mandatory for that spot as well. Um, we were just playing a bit of a waiting game because Richard has an injury. Hmm. Obviously, we were hoping maybe June or July, but the, but no one said anything. That was just what we were hoping for. And then this happened. So, uh, yeah. Hmm. I mean, was... Do you think it was looking likely? Because I remember you saying you didn't want him to vacate. You wanted Riappel to face you for the belt. Did you think that was going to happen? Should he have recovered from this injury? I saw him. He, he was recovering from the hand injury. He was going to get back punching soon. But, yeah, what was your sort of thought on it? Well, I don't think he's ready for world level anyway. Especially not after the injury he sustained. Apparently, he had an operation for that. I think it will make sense to really stamp your mark on the British scene and mm. there's no better way to do that than defending his British title so that would have made sense to me whether he was going to vacate or not I, I don't know but um, but yeah How do you uh, reflect on the Sam Hyde fight? Uh, have you had a chance to watch it back? It was end to end yeah, brilliant fight few times. I watched it a few times uh, good fight good fight it's it's not it's not the style I usually bring to the table uh, but it was the game plan and the game plan was a totally different one from the way I usually fight um, Gary was very clever about the game plan he put together um, the difficult thing was obviously I'm not used to fighting that way so <laughs> I got a lot of <laughs> I got a lot of beatings and sparring because of it yeah. but we got to a place where we knew we could confidently take on Sam with it and the last thing I wanted to do was give Sam any momentum by backing off all the time. I'm a I'm a boxer, that's what I do. I hit and I move. But we knew we'd have the crowd against us and we didn't want him, as tough as he is and as strong as he is, having any confidence as in throwing shots, coming forward, plodding forward, chasing me round the ring. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it was just... Uh, very clever game plan you know I hit with him I hit after him I was countering shots and um, a lot of time I was backing him up as well uh, hard fight hard fight mm. is it a type of fight you'd want to be in again with Sam I mean obviously potentially for maybe a vacant title if React or vacates but it was such a good fight that a lot of people were calling for a rematch was that something you'd be interested in even though you did win the fight <laughs> It was a close fight. There's no reason why there shouldn't be a rematch one day. I, I hope he keeps winning. I reckon he will. Yep. And we can go again. Maybe he could come to London this time and we do it again. Hmm. Um, how much of, sort of boxing have you been watching right now during this period? Are you watching any specific fights or fighters to sort of take a note of? I've been watching a lot of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Uh, just... Uh, just trying to see where where I can improve, you know. Yeah. I've uh, watched, uh, as I said, that Sam Hyde fight a couple of times. I've been watching a lot of Marvin Hagler. He's a, 
a southpaw I like to watch a lot of the time and um and some old Duran. And, yeah. And just just highlight reels, <laughs> mm. training videos, old spars, just um always improving. I mean, you mentioned Duran and Hagler. Who would you sort of rate as the highest between those two, Leonard and um Tommy Hearns? Tommy Hearns for talent, um, Duran for legacy, um, Marvin Hagler, just absolute king at middleweight. If they're so hard to split, aren't they? I, I think I think you could you can't argue with anyone for saying that either one of them are the best. They've all got their reasons. Yeah, I mean, do you have a particular favourite from them? Or for me, because I'm a southpaw, Marvin Hagler. Um, he done he done it the hard way. He had to go fight away from home a lot of the time. He never got given his opportunities when he should have, mm. and uh, was known for going to people's backyard and doing the job on them. So I think, in my opinion, he's the hardest out of those. Do you watch any of the cruiserweights of past as well, the likes of Holyfield or anyone? I watch Holyfield a lot. I think Holyfield was one of the fighters who got me into boxing. Um, warrior spirit but I think a lot of people don't tap into how much of a well schooled boxer he was um, obviously he was an Olympian um, amateur pedigree great feet um, great jab great counters um, if you watch him he never used to like throw more more than three shots mm. he used to get in hit you with two slip on the outside go again he'd fight in phases and it's something that me and Gary always try and emulate to the best of our ability. And um, one thing also, as a, one of the fighters on the smaller side of, of the Cruiserweight scene myself, I like to watch him against Bo, how he out-jabbed a taller man. Yeah. And uh, not it's not something you, you see a lot, but it can be done. I feel like a lot of people think if you're the short fighter, you kind of need to go in and have a war with the taller guy, break him down to the body all the time, which is fair enough. But I feel like if you are a superior boxer, it doesn't matter if the opponent's bigger than you. You can just stay on the outside and outbox him if you're confident enough. Mm, definitely. Um, one thing I do want to ask you about, and I've asked everyone, what's your opinion on perhaps behind, uh, fighting behind closed doors if, if and when we return to boxing? I'm not sure if it will happen, you know. Um, obviously, I'll do it. I've I've got to make a living. Yeah. And, um, I I don't have much feelings about it, as in I don't want to do it. I do want to do it. If that's the way it is, then then I'll do it. But I I just can't see it happening. I feel like a big part of boxing is the crowd, is the atmosphere. Was it going to be like a glorified spa? Like I don't know. Mm. Um. One fight that we may see when we come back is Lawrence Sicoli and Glowacki going for the for the world title. If we see that fight happen, how do you see it going? I just hope Sicoli don't mess up and lose <laughs> against Glowacki. I think a southpaw like Glowacki is a nightmare for Sicoli. And um, I'm not sure if he's ready for that level of opponent. If he does the business, good for him. But I just think experience will show at this stage. And what I see of a Coley is he does all the wrong things. I don't think he's confident on his inside work. I'm not even sure if he's that confident on his outside work from what I've seen. And I'm not sure if he'll be able to handle that stage. When I watch a Coley fight, I see a lot of nerves. I see a lot of wrong decisions being made. He just looks like a novice fighter all the time and Glowacki is he is uh, the, a real, the real deal. Mm. Um, one thing I did want to ask, um, why, what, what, what's the um, reasons behind your nickname, The Ghost? Where did that sort of start from? Do you know what? The Ghost actually didn't come from boxing. The Ghost actually come from what friends used to call me because I just used to vanish off the map all the time and no one no one could get hold of me. It carried on into boxing. Um, 
I've always been quite a evasive fighter. I've, or people always found me hard to hit. It's like it's like fighting a ghost, and um, it, it just stuck with what people used to call me. You know, um, it's funny because when I first started boxing, I was a lot more of a come forward, um, pressing, um, seek and destroy type fighter. I used to slug a lot. But I think I've grown into my name, you know. I, I use a lot of feet movement, head movement, and um, I'm difficult to hit. Mm. Uh, final one, what's sort of your message of advice and motivation to those out there right now? <sighs> Just keep to a routine, you know. It, it'll be over in no time. Um, just stay close to family, give mm. you phone calls to people who need support, and um, we'll get through this together. Great stuff, Dion. Thanks very much for giving us some of your time today. Um, and we'll Cheers. catch up hopefully in person soon. Nice one. Thanks for having me.